the only difference between the spring rest controller and the spring controller from traditional older spring web applications is the fact that the rest controller automatically and implicitly adds the response body annotation to every method in the class that handles and responds to an HTTP request. That's it. That's the only difference. Go look at the specification and you'll see it says it right there in the Java doc. The only difference is the fact that the at response body is implicit on every method that handles an HTTP request. Now that is the short answer to that question. I'll do a little bit deeper dive if you want to stick around. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at the serverside.com and I have to be one of the world's biggest spring boot advocates. And this is just one of the questions that I always get. What's the difference between REST controller that was new with Spring 4 and the traditional controller class that everybody was doing, that everybody that was doing Spring MVC is familiar with? I've actually got some code right here. This is actually from a tutorial that I do on Spring MVC. And you can see that one of the methods here has a get mapping for slash score. Now, that particular method is designed to return as JSON the number of wins, losses, and ties from a rock, paper, scissors game. It gets you the score. Now, that particular method is just supposed to return JSON to the client. It's just supposed to return a basic representation of the data without HTML, without images, without markup, messing up all the data. So normally in a Spring MVC application, at the end of a method that handles a, an incoming request, we usually forward to some sort of view component to take data that was generated during the processing and then mark it up in HTML so that it gets displayed nicely for the client, right? JSPs do that, Handlebars does that, Mustache does that, Timeleaf's the really popular one that does that in Spring Boot. But as you can imagine, if you're just taking a Java bean or just taking your model and just translating that directly into JSON or maybe even just translating it into XML, you don't want to go to some rendering technology like Timeleaf to, to pretty everything up. You just want the raw data sent to the client in the body of the response. And that's what that response body annotation does. It says, hey, skip the whole rendering phase that is part of Spring MVC, and instead, just take the data returned from this method, just take the Java bean, the object, the model returned from this method, quickly translate it into JSON and send it back to the client. Now, with traditional web applications using Spring MVC, anytime we wanted to do that, we had to add that response body annotation. That's what it means, skip the whole rendering phase. But if you were creating a RESTful API, if you were creating a RESTful microservice with Spring Boot, you'd end up unnecessarily, well, necessarily, um, adding that response body annotation to like every single method in the class. And it just became verbose and it became, uh, a, and it was unnecessary. And so with Spring 4, what they said was they said, you know what, we're gonna create a, a new annotation called REST controller. And if you annotate a class with REST controller instead of the Spring traditional Spring web controller, every single method in that class that handles an HTTP request, so anything decorated with put mapping or delete mapping or get mapping or patch mapping, any of those methods will automatically have that response body annotation added to them. So you end up getting a nice clean class. But the previous example, the web controller that I showed you was from a, a Spring MVC tutorial that I have that covers Spring MVC and Spring Data. Go and check that out, it's on YouTube. Um, this particular file here actually comes from a Spring Boot REST API tutorial that I do. And as you can see, all of the methods that are in this class are just returning JSON or returning XML if that's the agreed content type of the client. In fact, some of the methods here, like uh, the get mapping for score slash wins actually just returns text, doesn't even mark that up in JSON. But the point being, none of these methods here need any special markup routines. None of these methods here 
need the response to be sent to a view component that does timely for handlebars or mustache or something like that to mark the data up. All we need to do is just take the data, send it back to the client as JSON or XML as part of the response body, and that's it. That is good enough. And so there you go. That is the difference between REST controller and just the traditional spring web controller object. The REST controller automatically adds that response body annotation to all of the different methods in the class that are designed and developed to respond to HTTP requests. And so there you go. Now, by the way, if you enjoyed that quick tutorial and that quick overview, I do a lot of very fast overviews of technology on my YouTube channel. I'm famous for uh, not spending a lot of time filibustering and instead just getting right to the point. Um, so if you're interested in Git, GitHub, uh, Java, Spring, Scrum, Agile, Mojo, Python, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel because there's a lot of other tutorials like this. And by the way, I'm also the editor in chief over at the serverside.com. We've got a lot of great tutorials on Spring, Spring Boot, Spring MVC, even Spring AI. So head over there and check out what we've got cooking. Um, also, if you see behind me, I've got a couple of books out there too. So if you're interested in learning Hibernate, I did write Hibernate Made Easy. So JPA is pretty popular these days. Um, couple of other books. Uh, one is Pickering of Springfield, all about how the Simpsons originated in uh, the, the town for the Simpsons, actually originated in uh, Toronto, just outside of Toronto. So Pickering of Springfield, check that book out. And also, you know, it's a little book by uh, Darcy DeClute there, the Scrum Master Certification Guide. A uh, number of people have been reading that book and scoring uh, uh, on the exam uh, 100%. Um, so if you're interested in getting product owner certified or you're interested in getting Scrum Master certified, I definitely recommend that you pick up the Scrum Master Certification Guide by Darcy DeClute. I had a, a little bit of a hand in editing it and uh, I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, if you're ever interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Cameron MCNZ. And uh, by the way, if uh, I'm going long here, it's because uh, I'm filibustering. You see, uh, YouTube has this thing where if a video is eight minutes long or longer, they can put a long ad in the front of it. Um, and that encourages YouTube to promote your video, right? Because YouTube doesn't want to promote videos that they can't make a lot of money on. So if I can filibuster this and get this past the eight minute mark, um, then uh, not only can I produce this video and publish it, but there's a better chance that YouTube will promote it and other people will see it than if it was a video that was for less than eight minutes. So that's why I've been doing all of this filibustering uh, garbage here. But I do see that I've passed that eight minute mark. So um, having said that, I do hope that you enjoyed that discussion of what the difference is between controller and rest controller from Spring Web and Spring Boot. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe on the YouTube.